Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at uh, simulated annealing and we kind of uh, created our own objective function to understand what simulated annealing is. And now let's actually look at the steel optimization Python example. And uh, what does that even mean? Well, steel is made up of, uh, it's an alloy, right? I mean, you have iron as the main uh, metal and uh, you have a lot of other imp impurities added to make it strong. Now, what is the best combination of all these other elements like carbon, manganese, silicon, chromium? What is the optimal? Well, let's, let's look at it. That's the data set that we're going to play with where you have different types of steels with different amounts of carbon, manganese, silicon, and so on with different strengths, with different yield strengths. Can we actually do treat this as an optimization problem to find the optimal combination of these? And then, uh, and uh, th that's basically, I mean, this is a real world example, right? So this is a real world engineering example. So let's jump in and start looking at the code. And uh, you can get the data from this Kaggle link. Again, I'll share the code with you so you can go ahead and download the data and play uh, yeah, you know, with it yourself. So I did uh, download it. I put it in my drive and connected the drive to my Colab notebook so I can go ahead and import it right away. This is a .csv file and we'll have a look at what it is in a minute. So right here, so this is it. So you have the formula and what, how much carbon you have, manganese, silicon, chromium, and blah, blah, blah. And this is the uh, strength that we are looking at, yield strength, which is 2,411 megapascals in this case. I think that's the units, but you can see how this is stronger than this alloy and this alloy and this alloy seem to be almost uh, you know, similar yield strengths. So our goal is what is the right combination that gives us uh, the, the maximum yield strength. Okay, so that's that. And let's go ahead and see if there is anything that's not you know missing from this list, a typical data handling and data, you know, pre-processing and understanding exactly what's going on. So we have 312 data points, and that's the mean standard deviation, minimum. So we have some steels with 0% carbon, and the highest amount of carbon is 0.43, right? I mean, that's, that's a, a high level of carbon right there. And chromium and nickel, obviously, you can put more of it in iron. Okay, and the highest yield strength, 2510. So our search space would be in a way between zero for carbon and maximum 0 0.43 because we are searching within this space when we are doing, these are our bounds. Yeah, if you remember from last video, we looked at three different bounds for X, Y, and Z. But here we have a whole bunch of values to optimize. So we need to define all of these bounds. We saw this in the genetic algorithm, but I'm just mentioning that here. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the histogram of all of these. Uh, that's, the, that's the one I flashed on the main screen, as you can see. Okay, so what's the range? Again, I'm giving you all of this so you can get a good understanding of what the data is trying to communicate. And also understand, is my yield strength correlating with something? Is there a very high, strong correlation with any of these. So there is a negative correlation right there, means if I add more manganese, I'll get less strength of the material and so on. So you can study this and get, an, again, uh, some idea of what it is. Okay, now let's start preparing our data. First thing first, let's uh, drop these columns because they do not mean anything for us. And yield strength is a Y value, not an X value, so let's drop that. And by doing that, we will only keep the chemistry, the chemical carbon, manganese, and so on. And by the way, what are we trying to do? Optimize this space, right? What is the objective function we're going to use? There's a many ways you can put this together, this problem. But in this case, we are going to train a machine learning algorithm, like a random forest algorithm, and then use that for, for this chemistry and yield strength and use that as our objective function, okay? So... What is our X value? It's these. What's our Y value? It's yield strength. And let's split the data. You know this uh, using conventional machine learning techniques, right? So you split the data and probably you normalize the data if you want to include that. Uh, and random forest regressor is what I'm using. This is a regression problem, not a classification problem. And my model is random forest regressor with, let's start with 100 estimators and let's go ahead and fit on the training data. 
once you fit the model. I'm not explaining all of this because I assume you watched my 300 videos, uh, previous videos, and you know what Random Forest is. Even if you haven't watched my videos, I hope you know what Random Forest is, support vector machines is, what, what, what this conventional machine learning is. And that's what we are using over there. Now let's go ahead and predict it on our test data sets. And let's see how good that is by looking at the RMSE. Usually that means not much, but let's go ahead and plot between actual versus predicted. It's a linear relationship. I'm happy with that. So we are doing a decent job. Our model is doing a good job. So I'm confident with the model. So I'm going to use that model for my, for my, uh, 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 as my optimization function. But again, I did out of curiosity. Let's see how good the fit is between actual versus predicted. It's 85.8, I mean, right there. That's not bad, that's okay, R squared value. So I'm accepting that. And again, I'm adding more stuff, bonus stuff for you guys. Uh, feature ranking, like which ones really contributed more towards the towards this? So apparently titanium is the uh, highest one. This is, this is not a surprise. I don't know how much attention you paid earlier. If we go back here, if we go back here, uh, where is it? Uh, correlation right there, which, what has the highest correlation? Titanium, 0 0.51. Obviously it mattered when it comes down to this, right? And chromium is minus 0 0.4. So it does matter when you go down and look at titanium, carbon, silicon, and so on. And chromium apparently doesn't uh, contribute a lot. Okay. So, uh, so this is these are the type of features that are helping us the most in uh, in in predicting the yield strength. Again, is that necessary for optimization? Absolutely no. But if you want to be a good engineer, data scientist, data engineer, whatever you want to call yourself, you need to understand all aspects of this problem, so you can interpret the results when you actually when the optimization algorithm throws a bunch of values. Why should you believe in it? Yeah, so you should have other means of supporting why it actually gave you that result. Okay, so now that we're satisfied with that model, let's actually train our random forest on all data, all X and Y, not just the train and test. You can just train, use train and test, but I'm uh, modeling it on all data. And then now let's jump into the simulated annealing. And again, in the last video, we saw what simulated annealing is. You need an objective function to begin with. So our objective function is nothing but our model.predict on our x, which means it gives us a y. y in our case is nothing but a yield strength. So when we plug in our input values, and x is nothing but all of these values, our carbon, manganese, silicon, blah, 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 all of that. When I plug that into my objective function, model.predict, it should give me a yield strength. This is my objective function that I am trying to explore using simulated annealing. And what are the boundaries? Like I already mentioned, the boundaries are going to be the minimum value of carbon, maximum value of carbon. You can extend it if you want. You can extend it to, I don't know, a little more than maximum value, 10% more than maximum value. Then multiply this by 0 0.1 or something, 1.1. So these are all our boundaries and you can print the boundaries. It's nothing but a just, uh, you know, a, a list right there. And a list of lists, I should say. And this is for carbon and for the next element and so on. This is our input as bounds. We have, what do we have now? We have objective function, we have bounds. We need to define initial temperature, final temperature, and cooling rate, and we're all set. So this function is exactly same as the one from last video. I'm not gonna change anything, so let's go ahead and run it. Yeah, this is our simulated annealing function that we defined. Okay, now set the bound parameters, all that stuff. Our bounds are boundaries, we just defined that. Our initial and final temperatures are 100.1, cooling rate of 0 0.95, and go ahead and run the simulated annealing. When you run that, it gives you three outputs. One is final solution, final quality, and temperature. I'm gonna print all of that down here. That's it. You see how it's actually running the iterations there? Oh, it's done already. So there you go. This is how it actually followed the path, and the result is final yield strength of our amazing alloy, vibranium, <laughs> is 2420.945 and we got that value i should probably put a negative sign when it we are treating this as uh 
I'm explaining all the basics, but we are treating this as an optimization problem uh, because it's for trying to find the minimum. That's why I put negative results right there because it's trying to minimize that. So when you print it, go ahead and remove that negative sign when you print so you don't see the negative sign right there. But basically the answer is 2420 and you get that with this combination of uh, elements of carbon, titanium, manganese, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Okay, so I think that uh, should give you an idea of how this can be used for real world scenarios. And this is an engineering problem, but the key essence, I think, whether it is genetic algorithm or uh, simulated annealing or PSO, defining an objective function and the boundaries is what it comes down to. And then the algorithms are pretty standard. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the particles form optimization. I think for that, let's go ahead and use our own code initially. And I'll also show you how there are some standard libraries where you just plug in something, it gives you a result. So again, subscribe and let's meet in the next video.